all of us who follow science news regularly come across various stories on black holes. Their masses can range from few solar masses to even billions of solar masses. We know that compact objects like neutron stars and white dwarfs cannot be more massive than three solar masses. Thus, we call all such compact objects, super com ultra compact objects as black holes. It is true that Einstein's theory of gravity, called general theory of relativity, apparently admits the existence of black holes. But there are lots of conceptual problems and paradoxes with this paradigm. And though black holes are often described as flowery languages, such as cosmic monsters, they are the simplest objects in the universe. Einstein finalized his theory in 1915, and mathematicians wanted to apply it to the simplest problem, that is a single point mass. Yes, the Schwarzschild black hole, the spherical black hole we often talk about, is essentially a single point mass. And in physics, we also obey certain broad rules which fall under the purview of thermodynamics. In all physical activity, energy must be conserved. And this is known as first law of thermodynamics. And there is a second law of thermodynamics which tells that whatever you do in natural things, the disorder tends to increase. This disorder has a more formal name called entropy. And as far as black holes are concerned, since it's a single point mass with no activity, its entropy is zero by Einstein's relativity. And this point mass has actually infinite mass. And there's a strong gravitational field around it. And the red line you see is a point of no return. Anything falling inside it cannot come out, not even light particles. And it is called event horizon. And this radius of this event horizon is called Schwarzschild radius. And the black hole paradigm is based on the assumption that Schwarzschild radius is always finite. Now consider a hot cup of tea. So it is falling inside a black hole. And it will merge with the singularity. And the entropy of the black hole continues to be zero. Here is the problem. But the hot cup of tea has a lot of entropy. Where did it go? Did it vanish from the universe? And this is not allowed by second law of thermodynamics. So in the 1970s, Bekenstein proposed that hot cup of tea must increase the entropy of the black hole. And this in turn required that black holes already have significant amount of entropy and which is proportional to their surface area. And here is a contradiction. On one end, we I told black hole entropy is zero. On the other, entropy is there proportional to the surface area. And there are theories this entropy is supposed to be a quantum mechanics origin. What is quantum mechanics? The microscopic world of atoms and nuclei, elementary particles are governed by quantum mechanics. And we believe that all objects in the universe, including black holes, must obey rules of quantum mechanics. And here's the contradiction I told. And now there have been efforts to resolve this contradiction. People try to merge quantum mechanics with gravity. And these theories are called quantum gravity. But unfortunately, as of now, there is no successful theory of quantum gravity. Nonetheless, in 1974, Stephen Hawking did some primitive quantum gravity calculation around a black hole. And he concluded that black holes do radiate and they lose mass energy. But this radiation comes in a very tangled form. It cannot tell you the color of the cup and saucer which fell inside the black hole. Or it cannot tell what was the design imprinted on the black, on the cup and cup or saucer. That is, this radiation cannot take out any information out of black hole. Now imagine we are boiling water in a kettle. Now volume of the water decreases, and then if we keep on boiling, it will vanish. 
Similarly, black holes keep on radiating and radiating, they will shrink, 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 and then they will vanish. If so, all the entropy and information entrapped within the black hole will vanish from the universe. And this is a strict no-no for quantum mechanics. And this is a celebrated black hole information paradox. So information seems to vanish from black holes, which is not allowed. And so there have been innumerable attempts to resolve this paradox. Consider Gerard T. Hooked is a very brilliant theoretical physicist. In 1999, he won Nobel Prize in Physics for very fundamental work in particle physics. So long back he told that maybe on the event horizon there is some kind of structures which he called brick walls. They may be encoding the entropy. Last year he even told that information falling towards the black hole will bounce off from this brick wall like a tennis ball. And if nothing falls in the black hole, then there is no information paradox. And for last few years, several physicists have been telling that on the event horizon, there is a firewall. As if anything is trying to fall in the event horizon, will be burnt into ashes, nothingness. And nothing can fall, then there is no information paradox. But all such proposals are not based on any sound physics footing. Moreover, they all are blatantly self-contradictory. Because by very definition, black hole is a vacuum solution, a point and vacuum. There is no structure on the event horizon. So in 2004, Stephen Hawking told that maybe there is no exact black holes. And 2014, he reiterated this claim. And news came all over the world, there are no black holes. But while Stephen Hawking says that there are no black holes with event horizons, he conjectures that there may be something like apparent horizon black holes. What is apparent horizon? Event horizon is a permanent structure, it always stays. But apparent horizon is something temporary, it may be there for millions of years, billions of years, nobody knows. Anyway, Hawking could not establish these conjectures. So last year, he came up with yet another hypothesis that maybe on the event horizon there are some kind of features which as a metaphor he called hairs. News came that black holes have hairs. But this also received due criticism and Scientific American wrote that no, Stephen Hawking hasn't solved the black hole paradox yet. The mystery of black holes and information loss is too thorny for a quick resolution. Look, relativity is 100 year old. And this paradox is 42 year old. Now somebody is trying to find a resolution. It is no quick resolution. Then what is happening? What is the status of black hole information paradox? As if more you try to extricate yourself, more you are getting stuck in. Why is it happening so? So many brilliant physicists so many Nobel laureates who have done wonderful work in their respective areas cannot solve this problem. Then the problem must lie with the problem itself. That is, paradigm itself must be wrong. And here we can take you from the fact that Albert Einstein, the father of general relativity, never believed in black holes despite exact solutions. Neither did Arthur Eddington, the greatest theoretical astrophysicist ever. And many others also did not believe in black holes. But none of them could prove how GR can prevent formation of black holes. On the other end, this thing was done for the first time by this humble speaker in 2000. I wrote a long paper and attacked the problem from various sides and came to the conclusion there cannot be any exact black holes, no exact event horizon, not even apparent horizon. But while considering the collapse, so I am considering two perspectives, some observer is moving along with the collapsing star. And another observer is sitting pretty, he is seeing the collapse happening. But the second aspect I did not clarify, I was working alone, it created some confusion. Later I removed it, all results remain unchanged. And this became a new paradigm. And 27 peer-reviewed papers have been published on this thing by self, me, Daryl Leiter, Norman Glendening, Stanley Robertson, and Rudy Child of Harvard. And these papers 
got published in respectable journals, Astrophysical Journal, Astrophysical Journal Later, New Astronomy, Pramana, Journal of Mathematical Physics, and Monthly Notices, Astronomical Journal, Monthly Notices Later, and Physical Review D. And we attack the problem you know, from four pi ang solid angle. Why no exact black holes? Then what are the alternatives? What are the predictions of this new paradigm? And what are the evidences? So now you recall that whenever massive stars collapse, they become hotter and hotter, and radiation pressure increases. Now what happens, consider balloon. If you somehow are able to heat up the air of the balloon, it would try to inflate. All heat and radiation try to exert outward pressure. So what we showed, that immediately before the formation of the black hole, the outward radiation pressure must counteract the inward pull of the gravity. So you have a quasi-static state, a quasi-black hole, which has the same size almost as black holes. But this object is quasi-static, it is still contracting and radiating maybe at infinitesimal slow rate. And it is trying to attain the perfect black hole stage where nothing can escape. But while doing so, during this infinite journey, it has to radiate our entire mass energy. It has to become a zero mass black hole. I uh, also proposed that such objects should be strongly magnetized. And hence the moniker, magnetospheric eternally collapsing object, MIKO. And my prediction was verified by my American colleagues. In 2006, they presented evidence that in a famous quasar, the central object appears more to be ultramagnetized MIKO as predicted by me rather than black holes. Incidentally, black holes do not have any magnetic field. They may have surrounding disk and that can give only weak magnetic field. And since then, almost 100 black holes, astrophysical black holes have been found to have ultra strong magnetic fields which cannot be explained in the black hole paradigm. And a few months back, you may have heard that there is a big news one quasar NASA report was there, it is found as if it is emitting corona, and that is fire. So what I have told, Mikos are like ultra-compact suns which emit fire. And this again can be explained by the Miko paradigm and not by the black hole paradigm. Now when I say that there are no exact black holes, people think this fellow has gone mad, he is contradicting cheer. It is not so, there is a sublime point. The masses of all objects in GR comes from an integration constant. See, for a galaxy, the numerical value of this constant must be extremely large. For a star, it would be much smaller. For a planet, it would be even much smaller. And what we have shown, that since black hole mass is actually point mass, its mass energy is zero. And zero mass energy relativity does not mean absence of matter, it means all the positive energies are counteracted by negative gravitational energy. And it means that whatever you are thinking as event horizon sphere is a point. And it was not me only. 40 years back, French relativist Louis Bell came to the same conclusion in the same journal. So now, to sum it up, what we have found, that whatever you call black holes, for 100 years you thought black hole is like that. But we have shown the mathematical black holes, not the what you see in sky. They are actually points like the tip of a pin. Then the black hole paradigm collapses. It means in the sky, whatever we are detecting and calling black holes, they are actually not black holes. They must be some quasi black holes and most likely Mikos. And uh, two weeks back, there was a monumental discovery that gravitational waves have been discovered and due to merger of two compact objects. Now it is clear these compact objects cannot be true black holes which are points, they must be quasi black holes. And this I have conveyed to the international LIGO team which has discovered, I have sent a three page note to them, these black holes. And as to the black hole paradigm, this, well, let me uh, come back to the information paradox. So when there is no true black hole, no true event horizon, no, nothing is trapped, there is no information paradox, just paradox doesn't, doesn't ex exist. So 
42 year, 42 year paradox is solved. And also see, mathematically, if you go to mathematics, we shown that black hole solution is correct. But it is a point, your sphere is a point. Then its surface area is zero. In surface area is zero, and I also told that quantum entropy is proportional to the surface area. So quantum entropy of black hole is also zero. And this is what is given by general relativity. Now look, this state, state accession has the theme knitting visions. I have knitted the visions of general relativity and quantum mechanics. They give the same entropy for black holes, which is zero. For last 42 years, as if theoretical physics is being torn apart by questions, what is the source of black hole entropy? How to reconcile the apparent conflict between GR and quantum mechanics? How to remove black hole information paradox? All those things have been solved by my research. And all those things are not done by any tentative, poorly understood quantum gravity ideas, but by marrying well understood general relativity with basic astrophysic concepts like radiation pressure and Eddington luminosity. And all these things are published in peer reviewed journals which contain either exact derivations or generic ideas. So they just cannot be ignored so easily. And who knows, maybe in distant future, this day would be considered as a black day for black hole paradigm. And it, be, it is with this expectation I am wearing complete black today. I even dyed my gray hair black. Thank you.